Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're looking at the Perceva 927-2 soldering station. Oh, yeah. has been around for a long time probably a couple of years maybe three four years actually um, probably about time that I got around to reviewing the darn thing uh, this one shipped uh, in a pretty decent looking box telling you exactly what you get uh, the 927 2 now this one does come in a package that also includes those funky arms uh, but not in this case suffice to say though it's pretty decent little kit all things considered pumps out a max of 60 watts of power um, which is basically enough for anybody's general soldering needs uh, comes with these five replaceable tips as well so you don't just get that canonical tip no you get a bunch of tips chisel tips etc uh, needle point all the good stuff and you get this weird funky um solder uh, holder it's it's a bizarre setup because they actually give you two screws but there's really nowhere to mount it so it, it's just like hanging there yeah you got a lot of people think man darren you really suck and i i think it's a compliment you know because this i'm really good with these solder suckers unless they're talking about something else Ugh. anyway suffice to say this is a pretty decent solder sucker um typical of the low end but you know what it does the job has the uh, nice vinyl tip here uh, heat proof basically so uh, yeah I like them I like them also comes with that proverbial sponge right there and you get some solder tip cleaner basically it's a brass cleaning doohickey if I could just get it off there you go so a brass ball just dip your uh, soldering iron in there after you're done your soldering. Keeps it clean, keeps the tips clean, helps them uh, prevent them from becoming corroded. And I just think this stuff is awesome. And of course you get your soldering iron holder. In this case, just a metal, oh, Jesus. Oh, where did that go? It's a metal spring. Um, you just hold your soldering iron like so. And yeah, yeah. it's for soldering irons. The soldering iron itself is captive, uh, permanently attached to that soldering station. Not always a good thing, but in this case, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, standard soldering iron, we have that nice uh, grip over here, some good stress relief on the end. Overall, I mean, it's, you know, it's decent. Hey, this whole unit costs about 35 bucks US, so it ain't gonna break the bank. That 120 volt plug as well, also captive. So it's in there permanently. So yeah, a lot of permanence going on with this unit front and back. By the way, these uh, holes here, that is for those uh, extra arms that aren't included with this kit. Overall, it's a decent looking unit. Um, like I said, it does feel a little on the cheap side. And uh, it, it, yeah, a good thing to do with any soldering station you get, uh, make sure the darn thing is grounded. Basic, basic, but uh, you want that just to be on safety's sake. So let's just put our meter into continuity here. And I'm gonna put one tip on the end of that soldering tip. And the other's gonna go on the grounding of the plug and we should get a nice continuity beep. Should get a nice beep. And we should get a beep. And we're not getting a beep so initially wow that is not a good sign <sighs> all right so we're not getting a continuity which means uh, it doesn't look like or sound like this uh, station has been grounded properly Therefore, I'm gonna make an executive decision and do a teardown before we actually start using the soldering station. Oh. So I'm gonna get rid of the uh, soldering holder, which I set up. And this is what I'm talking about, just so you can see here. Uh, we've got one screw there and we've got two holes here, but 
but I mean, unless I'm missing something and directions don't say otherwise, uh, that's all there is to it. So weird. All right, let's take this apart and see what the heck is going on. So I'm gonna assume that the screws underneath these rubberized feet Alrighty, so I have those four Phillips removed, and away we go. And yeah, wow, look at that. So that looks like it's our grounding wire for the iron, and it has got some, oh yeah. so. Simply put, looks like that grounding wire has come loose. So that's all there is to it. So perhaps uh, during shipping, this got knocked around, what have you. Wire is pretty brittle. And um, look at the small gauge they're using for the iron itself. Pretty chintzy. So I'm just gonna solder that and uh, get us grounded. Need a little more sheathing to come off of that wire and that's not enough yeah that's better yeah you want to make sure you're grounded because um, for safety's sec sake you uh, want to avoid any of those shocks <laughs> at all possible because believe you me getting 120 volts is a jolt okay so I've got that wire in there like so I'm gonna take that nifty little soldering iron that I reviewed the other day heat it up do a quickie repair here There we go. Plenty of solder already on that uh, wire. We don't need more. Of course, I forgot to put the heat shrink tubing back on. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of electrical tape here just because it is sort of loose and dangling and we don't want it to short just in case. Just love putting electrical tape on brand new instrument tool alrighty let's give it a quick go see make sure we've got everything the way it should and there we go we're grounded Okay, so let's take a closer look at that PCB since we've got it open. Um, starting over here on the power side, there's the 10-pin uh, microcontroller. I believe that's 8-bit high-powered resistor. We've got our filtering capacitor over here. Over here, U5, that looks like a um, voltage regulator. That would make sense. By that way, that capacitor, that's a 2.1 uh, microfarad. No, 2.2 microfarad, uh, 250 volt metallized polypropylene uh, film capacitor. Those are definitely uh, preferent, preferred when it comes to um, high power and filtering. Moving more to the left here, we've got a, a triac. It's a photo triac. Um, over here is a tiny, oh my God, a tiny, tiny little SMD fuse. So we're going to get a uh, good old classic not even a pigtail now they're giving us this cheesy little smd fuse Ugh. of course underneath we have our variable uh real stat over here 927d2 version 3.2 3.2 you think they would have got it right after mm, three 
And it looks like we have some sort of a calibration uh, pot over here as well. Um, it says V2. So, eh. Anyway, there you go. Really, really Mostly tiny. Mostly plastic housing here. Uh, that actual PCB area is just oh so small. So that's why this thing is so light. No transformer. Now, now, now. There you go. Okay, going to put it back together and let's see what this can do. By the way, I opted to put in a pigtail fuse, replace that little SMD, just in case the thing blows again anytime soon. That'll be a lot quicker and easier to replace the pigtail. The solder that they provide is that cheap Chinese unleaded stuff. Yeah, garbage. Your mileage may vary, but yeah, that's what you get. Okay, so it's idling out 90 degrees Celsius. That's 194, just under 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to crank it up. Let's put it to uh, 222 degrees Celsius. Let's see how long it takes. Iron is still catching up. So though you're getting that display of 222, uh, it's definitely not what the iron temperature is. Wow, it's slow going here. Four hundred and thirty Fahrenheit, two hundred twenty-two degrees Celsius is what we want. Sitting at about one hundred and thirty right now. Oh wow, slow. So the PID controller that is in this uh, little soldering station um, is designed to once you get to that threshold to maintain a constant temperature uh, with a little afterthought. So, but man, it is slow in getting to that temperature, two hundred twenty-two degrees. And we are sitting at, good God, but 140 after over a minute. So five minutes later, five minutes later, and check this out. We can't even melt solder five minutes later, sitting around 150 degrees. Oh, wow, this is painful. So rather than just waiting for 222, we've decided to go for broke and put it up to 480 degrees Celsius. That is a whopping 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, what do you know? We can melt some solder now. What are we at temperature wise here? So we're up to about 330 degrees and counting. If you are in a rush to solder, don't use the Presivia. So the soldering iron has been on now for about eight minutes and uh, about 340, 350 Celsius is where it seems to be stopping. So nowhere near that 480 degree display output. Oh my God. So once again, the display is showing us around 480. We're sitting about 350. Uh, I give up. Let's just see how it is in terms of basic soldering here. Yeah, so I mean, if you haven't already fallen asleep waiting for it to reach its ambient temperature, um, it will go into sleep mode for you. To take it out of sleep mode, simply give it a little shaky, shaky, wakey, wakey, and bada boom, bada bing, the fun begins again. Ugh. I ended up uh, going back into the unit and adjusting the pot right over here. Turned it clockwise as far as it could go to the right hand side. And wow, what a difference it made temperature wise. Now at least we gained about 100 degrees or so. Okay, let's take a quick second look since I've readjusted that temperature pot. Turn the machine on. 250 degrees Celsius is what we are set for. Hopefully we can get a little bit closer. After one minute, we are at the 200 degrees Celsius mark. Still climbing, but uh, yeah, awfully slow.
So coming in just under 210 degrees Celsius, not the 250 that we uh, are set up for. Still showing better than it did. Um, but uh, yeah, still not the most accurate, is it? Closing thoughts on the Presidia 927D. Oh man, pass this one by. I've got nothing against cheap soldering stations. No, in fact, I love them, but not this one. Not only is it cheaply made, but the performance is downright atrocious. Need to be repaired as soon as I got it, and oh man, oh man, one thing after the other. Oh, this one is just a turd. For the same price, you can find much better out there in solder station land, and with a lot better performance. Considering this is supposed to be PID, uh, in this case, I would call it PIB. Pass it by. If you have a small size bench, um, it's definitely going to accommodate that uh, without taking up much real estate. But that being said, that's probably the only good thing I can say about this station. The Perceva 927-2 gets a dismal 0.5 out of five stars. Certified fail. Yeah. This one is a big no Thanks for watching this review. Everybody, till the next one. Keep on testing.